and Bex, welcome back to my channel. This week I'm doing something totally different and finally getting back to using my graphics tablet. This is the first time that I've actually done a full illustration on this in quite some time. Um, I've been quite focused on traditional art and painting but it was actually digital art that kind of got me back into drawing while I was at uni. I'm really excited to kind of revisit this. The program I'm using for this drawing is Clip Studio Paint. I am drawing a kraken, uh, which is something totally unfamiliar to me. I don't think I've ever drawn an octopus or a squid or kind of anything from that family, so this was a challenge to say the least. This video was voted for by my patrons, it's the first monthly vote on a video theme, so yeah, that's really exciting, that was a lot of fun, and thank you guys so much for suggesting that I draw a kraken, because to be honest, I don't know if I would ever have come up with this idea myself, but yeah. Thank you guys ever so much, and if you're interested in checking out my Patreon, the link is in the description below. Anyway, back to the drawing. To get started with this, I have brought up some references. The program that I use for my reference pictures to kind of overlay them on top of the screen, as you can see in the corner, is Pure Ref. It is free and it is amazing, so if you like digital art, I would highly recommend it. It's very useful. The reason I thought it was so important to start with reference pictures is because I really haven't drawn anything like this before and I had no idea, I, I had no idea, <laughs> to be honest. Drawing the legs was like drawing spaghetti, I was having the worst time trying to kind of plan out where everything should be. So really when I started mapping out the legs I wasn't thinking too much about the twist on them or the direction they were going in um, or the thickness of them, I was really just trying to find a place where they would all fit and, you know, create a bit of an interesting silhouette. One of the things that I've been trying to improve in my artwork and my drawings is thinking about how the picture would look without any line work at all. I really wanted this character to be recognisable without all the line work and the details and things like that. Um, so yeah, that was one of the things I set to achieve. I wanted to create some kind of interesting shapes using the negative space. And I think that actually worked out quite well for me. It's something I'll be working on some more in the future, hopefully. <laughs> so I started off with the blue pencil for the kind of under sketch, construction sketch, that thing. Yeah, that one. And I decided to go in on top of that with another sketch layer, just to kind of refine things a little better. It was getting quite difficult to see exactly where I wanted everything. So I thought it'd be better to just use that as a guide and do two sketch layers before I started inking. On the second layer I wanted to think about the placement of the tentacles and the, I suppose the direction of the like suckers or whatever you call them. <laughs> I have no idea. I really couldn't be bothered sitting drawing out all those little circles, especially knowing that I had to do a layer on top. So I actually found a really useful brush on the Clip Studio Paint Asset Store. It was a free brush. I have never made brushes in Clip Studio Paint. I've made some for Photoshop. And to be honest with you, it's something that I'd actually really like to do. Uh, I could have saved myself a ton of time if I had just spent the time to make a, a brush to do all of the little suckers. But instead I sat like a maniac and drew, I don't even know how many circles. <laughs> it took a long time. I, there is something I like about it because it, there's so much kind of variation in them. I think it looks quite organic and, you know, very hand drawn, which is nice. But yeah, it, it took hours, like hours. <laughs> so I'm really, in the next few weeks, going to start looking into making some of my own brushes for Clip Studio to do the things that I don't have brushes for already. The brush pack I'm using in this video is from Flyland Designs. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. The Clip Studio paint brushes are absolutely amazing. I use them all the time, and it saved you know it saved me making loads and loads of brushes um, when I first got the program, and I was kind of still getting my bearings with it. I have to say, I think the Flyland brushes are really like affordable and good value for money anyway. I've certainly had my use out of them. I really like the way they look. Yeah, 10 out of 10. When I was doing the line work for this particular drawing, I found myself using the undo button a ridiculous amount. Um, trying to get those really kind of long sweeping lines was quite difficult, especially with all the twists and turns. I do not have the steadiest hand, so that was a bit of a struggle to overcome as well. Unfortunately, the screen kind of zooms in and out and rotates quite a lot because of that, but you know, I 
seem to be able to get straighter lines or more accurate lines depending on the direction of the drawing and this is the first video that I've made so I never really thought about the problems that that could result in for you know the like speeding it up and the filming and how nice it is to watch so I'm sorry for that guys the next time I do a digital art piece I will do my best to keep the screen in place and maybe not move it about so much. Once I had finished the liner I got on to adding the shadows I wanted to give this like a bit of a comic book feel. I really like the kind of black shadows that they use in comic books and it's something that I have a lot of fun playing around with. So I wanted to do that and there is a tool in Clip Studio Paint which is just amazing. It's called the Lasso Fill Tool and basically, you know, you just use it as like the Lasso Tool and it just automatically fills in the shape with whatever colour you have selected. It makes making these shadows so easy. I know that doing this in Photoshop would be a pain in the ass, so yeah, absolutely rate it. If you if you like comic book stuff, Clip Studio is the program for you. Who knew a dedicated drawing program would make colouring so much easier? <laughs> Once I was done with the shadow layer, I started colouring and what I like to do is pick a kind of grey tone for the background just so that I can see the shapes and things more clearly and I've got a neutral colour to work from. I think it makes picking colours a lot easier and it's a lot easier to identify problems with contrast and things like that so it's just the way I do things but yeah that's it. I added my flat colours in, after that I made a new layer and picked a kind of desaturated purple colour for the shadows. I put this over my entire drawing and I kind of slowly cut away at it using the lasso fill tool on transparent mode. I find it easier to pick out the lighter areas than draw in all of the shadows. After that I just grabbed some texture brushes and went a little bit crazy adding some more shadows, some highlights and just playing around with things. I wasn't really happy with the colours and you'll see me messing about a lot with them at the end. Thanks so much for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like this artwork it is available in my Redbubble store on a variety of products and I just want to say another big thank you to my patrons for suggesting and voting for this awesome subject. It has been a blast and I look forward to doing more of your challenges in the future. Anyway, catch you guys later, bye!